Welcome to New Life Live with host and founder of New Life Ministries, Stephen Arterburn. New Life Live is dedicated to transforming lives one at a time, thanks to the giving hearts of you, our listeners. Our goal is to provide you with wisdom from God's Word to give you hope and help in life's hardest places. If you have a question you'd like to ask today, our phone lines are open. Call 1-800-229-3000. That number again is 1-800-229-3000. Now here's Steve. Hi there. Welcome to New Life Live. Glad you're with us here today. And when I say us, well, we've got the A-team in. <laughs> My last name's Arterburn, uh, Becky Brown, that's B, and Jill Hubbard, that's uh, D. Way down behind there. Her name. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Jill Hubbard. Anyway. Yes. <laughs> glad you're with us here today on New Life Live, and uh, we are um, hoping and praying that you're having a great day and you're going to have an even better weekend. If it isn't 11 a.m. Eastern Time yet today, then you could watch Life Recovery Today on your cable network, the NRB network. It's, it's like an N and then an R and a B over there on the left side. And uh, Life Recovery Today. We, you can also find out about it at liferecoverytoday.net. And there's always an amazing story, mm -hmm. trouble, problem, and hope and restoration every single time we're on there. So tune in if you could. Also, I want to mention that we've been in the process of developing some books. And we had a, a series before called Understanding and Loving a Person With, and then we had a problem that we addressed, like narcissistic personality disorder or depression, things like that. Now we have a new series, Understanding and Loving Your Child Who, and we've got two new books, mm -hmm. Who Has ADHD and also Who Smokes Pot. And so any gift of any amount, I'll send one of those to you. All you have to do is just ask for it. You call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Let's go to the phones and let's uh, talk with, uh, I believe that this is, it's uh, Molly. Yeah, Molly there from Winchester, Virginia, listening on the great, wonderful station WAVA. Hi there. How are you? Hi, Steve. My name is Molly and I'm from Winchester. Um, I was listening to your caller the other day about um, infertility and how she questioned if God wanted her to have children or not. Um, yeah. In my case, um, I, I married later in life, not until I, well, my second marriage, first one was a practice that went all wrong. Mm. But um, uh, my second marriage, I, I married late in life at 40. I uh, had several miscarriages, but I was determined to have a child. And um, when adoption fell through, we went with IVF, and lo and behold, I conceived two beautiful children, oh. not one. Um, I'm currently 63 years old, and my children are 12. And they have no idea that I used um, another woman's eggs to conceive them. I'm heartfelt because I feel like, um, I'm sorry, I'm having a moment. Um, it's okay. That they, should, that they should know. But the other part of me doesn't want them to know because I'm their mom. Hmm. Well, I don't okay. Know what God would say to me. Yeah, I think that's really, really yeah. tough. And we hear the pain that you're in. And um, I'm grateful that you're calling us and they're 12, not 16 or 26 or something like that. So um, we'll give you some help here. But this is a reasonable age that you would decide to tell or not tell. At 16, you'd have to say, well, you know, this is tough because, um, but yeah, we're still in that zone. So we'll give you some help right after this. You're listening to New Life Live, we're really trying to handle tough questions and give you a biblical perspective, perspective that is seeped hopefully in God's truth here. So we'll do that right after this message. You're listening to New Life Live. You need some help. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 
My husband's been addicted to porn since he was 10 years old. I found out about nine months into my marriage that he has a porn addiction. My name is Shelly Martinkus, and I want to personally invite you to the Restore Workshop. If you have been affected by betrayal, it might be that your husband has been looking at pornography. It might be an emotional, a physical affair. I would love for you to come join us. Restore has empowered me and has given me the tools to work through my anger, work through my pain, work through my confusion, and help me realize that I am worthy. Being here and being surrounded by people who get it has given me my power back. Please don't hesitate. Pick up the phone, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. I would love to see you there. The Restore Workshop is coming to Washington, D.C., November 12th through the 14th. To register or to find out more, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE or go online to newlife.com. Thank you, Restore. You have changed my life forever. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. We're back. Steve Arterburn here, and I have uh, been part of uh, being an infertile couple, and I we've dealt with all these issues, and it is so complicated and so complex. Uh, of course, Madeline uh, is my wonderful daughter that uh, because we were infertile we got to adopt her and it's just been one of the greatest blessings ever 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 but it doesn't eliminate the difficulty and the struggle with all the issues around things like this so becky you had a question you wanted to start off with here. yeah so molly i hear your heart and uh, it's such mm -hmm. a wonderful thing that you have these children i wonder um what has kept you from having this as part of the conversation up to this point? Um, my husband doesn't think I should say anything ever. And okay. um, since he is the head of the home, and um, I kind of go along with it. I know that normally I'm kind of feisty and I do what I want. <laughs> but um, it, it kind of... Um, it gives me the excuse not to tell them. Uh, also, if I were to tell them, I don't know how he'll react if they tell, question him about it. Okay. He, now let me let, let's start from the beginning here. First of all, uh -huh. is your thought that the head of the home always gets to decide? It's always his way? Is that the oh, way no. you interpret that? I think you're saying this is a good excuse. Yes, that's what I said. Well, but she said he doesn't yeah. want it, and right. he's head of home. Right. And I just wanted to be sure to clarify that the head of home, that makes him, he has, the Bible says he has to die to himself to maintain oneness in the home he's head of. It doesn't mm -hmm. say he's tiebreaker as head of home. It doesn't say she gets, well, we, we, uh, she gets her way as long as she agrees with me. That's stupid. That's stupid. That's a horrible way to look at yeah. marriage, especially when the Bible says, submit yourselves one to another out of reverence for Christ. Then there are about 40 words on a woman's need to submit. And about a hundred words right after that on a man's need to die to himself. If I was talking to him, I would say, what, what are you doing here? You have, right. you have two children who are going to, at some point, get some kind of DNA test thing to uh, un uncover their ancestry. Right. And, and they're going to discover something that they need to know, they're entitled to mm -hmm. know right now. What is he well, afraid of, Molly? Yeah. I I don't know necessarily. I've never gone beyond that statement or you know question because uh, he is quick to anger. Um, we're working on that. Uh, he's never he's not physical or anything. He is quite controlling, although he denies it. Well, um, here's the thing. The, I, here's the thing about the the kids. It's never good yeah. to 
keep secret the origins of another human being, whether they're adopted, whether they have been um, conceived through IVF. The miracle of them being alive is something to be celebrated. Mm -hmm. And that the the woman who donated the egg in order for this to take place, it's just miraculous. It is something Mm -hmm. to be celebrated. And anytime we put it into a secret, it becomes shameful. As opposed it to ugly, doesn't it? Yes. yes, that's Becky. It's exactly what I was thinking. This is something that you guys feel shame about. Like somehow we couldn't produce children, so we had to have outside help. Versus what Becky, you're describing as the miracle of life. Mm-hmm. And I, I think this is truly a modern day question, Molly. Because decades ago, you could have kept this secret, mm-hmm. and they wouldn't need to know. But I have known people who find this out years later, and they're angry, mm-hmm. right? Yes. There's no yes. way you can keep this secret. Right. And I no. think the way that you start it, Molly, I think you're going to have to be honest with your controlling husband, who's the head of the home, and say, listen, I know you're going to get <laughs> angry about this, but it's time for a talk. And then you begin yeah. way back in the, in the you know, just how you did with us, you know, that I... Yeah we didn't get married till then. And then it was, you know, all of the story and Mm -hmm. to celebrate, we're so grateful, you know, because I know your heart, I could hear it. Yeah. I've always had the speech practice for them. I I mean, I have Mm. it down to a science. Mm. Um, I, I was, I would poise it to them was you're extra special because of all of all the children I could have had. We picked you and Mm. God chose you to be in our lives. Mm. You, you know, and since I couldn't do it, someone helped me. Mm-hmm. And she, she's not your mom. I'm your mother. It, anybody can be a mother, but it takes someone special to be a mom. Well, and you carried I, them I too, that. Molly. I, you know, I did carry you them full term. So they, they're, um, your voice no, is the only no voice. Complications. That they've right. heard. You delivered the only them. Voice I've ever heard. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I delivered the, them. What's the worst thing that would happen if you were to tell your husband, I'm going to go through with this, whether you want this or not? He's going to fight with me. That's the worst thing. He'll argue with me. Well, okay, what I, if you, um, I, I think, though, you have to come to him and, and talk, kind of have a heart to heart and say, let's, let's revisit this. Let's talk about this right. because the reality is they will find out and then they may be really angry yeah. with us. And you want to be oh, the I ones know. to tell them. Yes. It's, it, it they isn't don't a, want 23 and me to yeah. tell them. Exactly. It's, it's not a question of you going to your husband and saying, honey, we need to talk about this with the kids. It's not a request. It's literally, I have decided that we need but, to do this. I know you don't want to do this. But it's important for them to know this from us. And isn't one of the problems here that he doesn't really care what your heart Mm. has in it? Mm. No, I Mm. don't believe so. I I don't think I've ever gotten a chance to tell him how I feel about it. Mm. Because he gets mad. Do you know Um, what? he's 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 a good man. Okay. No, he's not. He's no, 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 he's he's not. Mm-hmm. I, I don't, I'm not going to let you sum him up. Keeping you in a childlike state as yeah. a good man. He is a multidimensional man. He has some good things about him. And the things that I hear, the main things that I hear, he's got some really crummy things too. And so I, I don't, I haven't heard enough to where I would say that this is what we would call a good husband. But I I'm, mean, you know, I'm you, al- you, you, go ahead, Jill. Sorry, I'm also hearing, Molly, your part in it is that you haven't ever pushed it. You haven't ever Not really right. had dialogue about it. So no. you just took his first reaction and just went with that. And it's time to have dialogue. And you're fearful, right. Molly. I, I hear that. You're uh-huh. fearful. But that's why I say, what is the mm-hmm. worst thing that's going to happen by you telling the true story of this miraculous birth? And I don't understand where his feelings are coming from, because I'm not him, 
Um, but I don't, it, but I think what's happening is you're intimidated by him. So then it just stops. And yet you've got yes. the story ready to go. You mm-hmm. are ready to be open. And I think you may lead the way and show him you're not going to die because they're going to know the truth. This is going to be a good thing. And we're going to go forward from here. Yes. And it's perfect now, timing. Yes, with the, Oh, he is the biological father. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so here's something. I don't know if anyone has ever said this to you, but have they ever said you have to, or you've heard this, you have to find your voice? Have you ever heard that? I've said that to myself. Okay. Mm. And your voice, it doesn't sound like a woman in her 60s. Has anybody ever mentioned that to you? Have you ever thought that? All the time. Okay. <laughs> so I get this... calls and it's like, "Cause your parent home?" And yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So and that's that is funny, um, but mm-hmm. I but think, not at the same time. I think it is a bit of a symptom of him, and uh-huh. rather than helping you to develop that adult, mature inner voice that then is projected out a little mm-hmm. differently than it would be now that that hasn't happened and i think the connection between you and your children that's worth mm-hmm. doing the work mm-hmm. to find your voice and using it while they're 12 years old <laughs> not 13 right. yeah. 12 yeah. you, they're, they're not teenagers right Mm-hmm. When they're th- they turn 13, I think you cross the line that makes it much more difficult for them to understand why you didn't right. tell them. The other part of that, too, you know, like I said before, everyone deserves to know their origin, their s- story of origin. That's why people are doing these mm-hmm. genetic tests. You know, it's interesting, though, that your husband, who is the biological father, he, you know, I don't mm-hmm. understand where his um, need to keep this down but here's one thing i want i think that it would be better for you to be equipped with whatever the story is about the donor i don't know if she wants to be known or if it's you know Uh, locked down she'll never be known i didn't know who she was i i saw a picture of her Hmm. because they're gonna want to know they're gonna that's gonna eventually become part of their thought process. But the reason why I say that is because when you present to them and I love the idea she though, was Steve. Anonymous the, to me. Right. This is a twelve year old conversation. You know, mm-hmm. okay, right. you're about ready to go into this next part of your life and I want you to know this is true. You know I, I feel like you're ready yeah. to know this now and right. understand mm-hmm. it at this age. And, right. And, you know what so you do. You know where babies come from now, right? Right. But I, I have another sometimes question. Sometimes there's more to that story. Did uh, did you um, were all of the fertilized eggs used? Oh yes. Okay. Well, great. no, not all of them. I mm. I had I had the ones, the leftover ones destroyed. He didn't want to keep them banked, so I had no, you know, again, decided because of him. We we won't we won't use them, but I don't know what they did with them. They could have given them to someone else. Yeah, you know it's all hearsay. I I came originally came from New York. Um, well, and how that was uh, twelve years ago. Well, um, right. In, in you know any, it's always important to consider that, but uh, there's no reason to deal with that right now. So. Um, no, no, that's I another just, show, right? Well, I but just, I think, well, but I think where you were going with that, I, it goes back to what I said. Mm-hmm. You need to have as much information. They may not need to know it at the moment that you explain this to them. You know, right. but later, I've act- yeah, I've actually later been in those be conversations yeah. where you find out about people that you mm-hmm. thought were somebody, and then they turn out to be somebody else. You are their right. mother from the day of conception, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. And yes. so that that is, uh, you know, that's what you're going to be celebrating. But also it's very important to bring the truth about their life mm-hmm. into their life mm-hmm. at an age where they can mm-hmm. begin to process I, that. 
and and this I think it's this, a wonderful story. It, it is. Sure is. It should okay, be but, a but happy story, thing. not here's with trepidation. It it is Wait. it has a lot of um, weight mm-hmm. now put on it. And you know, when we adopted Madeline, we didn't refer to her as our adopted daughter because she was our daughter, more daughter than anything. Right. And when she went right. into college, her essay said, I was adopted at birth but it seems like it was always meant to be. Mm. And that's that's Aww. the goal here, and mm-hmm. you've got an opportunity yeah. for that if you find that voice. And um, I'll have. tell you, I mm. tell you, it's important mm. that you do it, and I'm mm. really glad but you called us, okay? Thank you so much. Um, I'm a little pressed for time because they're going to be coming home. Well, yeah. Okay. I'm well, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna send you every man's marriage. It's about mutual submission. And call us back, Molly. Yeah. <laughs> it had become very apparent that some of the things I was involved with were taking over my life. In today's world, men are barraged with inappropriate content and images all day, every day. Some say that certain behaviors are just no big deal. It's just part of being a guy. But it's simply not true. It's a battleground for every man, and the opportunities to fail are everywhere. New Life's Every Man's Battle Workshop can help. After seven years, take just one weekend, a completely changed man. For over 20 years, New Life Ministries has been helping men regain their integrity and purity through their one-of-a-kind Every Man's Battle Workshop. He said, you know, I think this is something that every man should go to married dating it was definitely life-changing now the workshop is coming to orange county california november 5th through the 7th don't wait for him to call to find out more call 1-800-NEW-LIFE or go to newlife.com 1-800-NEW-LIFE Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. Your ministry has saved my life. If you struggle with emotional hurt, family or marriage problems, the pit of depression, or the pain of addictions, we can help. I'm down 100 pounds now from what I was. You guys are awesome. You are a blessing to America. (laughs) Our treatment programs provide clinically appropriate solutions from licensed professionals all in a biblical framework. I have had problems with alcohol. I think God has ordained this place to be His. You don't have to be a prisoner of your pain. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. She tells me that I'm a new man and I feel like a new man. It worked for me and it can work for them too. This time it is different. If you're ready to take the first step toward genuine spiritual and emotional healing, please call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Call one 800 New Life. That's 1 800 639 5433. We'd love to hear from you. If you have a question or a comment, call toll free 1 800 229 3000. Now back to New Life Live. We're back. Oh my goodness, I'll tell you. The, you know, if you're listening, you have just heard an example. Two. Eight things. <laughs> one, <laughs> one is that when you think about the life of Jesus, when you think about his honoring of women, the way he treated people, mm-hmm. is there anything in there where it sounds like, feels like a dictator, doormat mm-hmm. marriage is what Jesus would have in mind? Mm-hmm. Let me answer that for you. <laughs> no, no. It's ridiculous. Mm. No. Jesus would much more be for what it says, mutual submission. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She submits to him while he is dying for her. Right. Now that is a marriage Mm -hmm. that'll work. Mm -hmm. And, And nobody, oh my goodness, anybody thinking, well, you know, well, yeah, it's a mutual thing. And then if uh, we don't agree, I'm the tiebreaker. Oh, have you thought that through? That means everything goes your way. That is a mm-hmm. horrific way to be married. And well, if you and- are someone that has allowed that, you really need yeah. to read Every Man's Marriage. 
The hard Maybe. part, I think, is that it's kind of like that passage in Galatians 5 where the little yeast works through the whole dough. That message has been mm-hmm. misconstrued for centuries yeah, right. in mm-hmm. the church. Right. And so you can't say it enough, Steve. That is right. Well, and, All right. and nobody should be afraid of their spouse. Right? Right? No <laughs> right. one should be afraid to bring and conversation. You, are, you might have a right? bigger problem there than submission. There is something submission. <laughs> not right if you are afraid. Mm. Yeah. And if you are, you need to call us. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that there's your die to self out of oneness. Mm. If you have a spouse that's afraid of you, are you dying to your desires and wants? Mm. No. Okay. Mm. Let's go to Joyce. She's calling from Raleigh, North Carolina. She watches us on YouTube, and we're glad she does. Hi, how are you today? Hi, how are you all? We're doing all right. Yes, we are, and we're always concerned about our calls and callers, and we didn't go into all the aspects of infertility and frozen eggs and embryos. and yeah. But anyway, we're glad we're getting to talk to you. <laughs> how could we help you? Um, I'm calling about uh, my son, who is 24 years old. Uh, he is high-functioning, autistic. Uh, it wasn't determined he was uh, autistic until he was 18, unfortunately. Um, but he uh, was always been a great student, and it was difficult, but he made it through uh, NC State and uh graduated last year great um that would be may during the pandemic which was uh it disappointed him greatly that he couldn't uh walk the stage um, sure. he yeah. is uh uh relationships are difficult quite difficult for him uh uh and um he does see a, a therapist um, and he's worked on it, but he's never had, uh, friends. Um, he struggles with that. Um, but he's been looking when he, uh, he has been looking for a job since he graduated in May, in April of this year, he was, uh, finally found a job in his major. Uh, we were so grateful. Cut off. Something interesting. Well, maybe she. We will just lost her. Call back. I mean, just literally. Well, the whole phone bank just oh. went dead there. <laughs> that is tragic. Bummer. Which gives me some time to talk about something I've been wanting to talk about. Detail. Sure, mm-hmm. sure. Halloween is near, mm-hmm. which means Thanksgiving is near Mm -hmm. which also means christmas is coming up and (laughs) i want to tell you the whole holiday list so get over thanks get over uh halloween gifts it's time to think about gifts and we've got some great Mm -hmm. gifts like bibles restoration bible every man's bible and the uh, life recovery bible anybody that's recovering you give them this bible it's home run Mm -hmm. So if you're thinking about what am I going to give somebody, let us help you. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We've got a lot of things. And when you buy it from us, you are, well, you're blessing this ministry. Mm -hmm. Now, you can get something on Amazon, but it doesn't help a ministry. And, you know, we, we really do need your help in making us a resource for your resources for gifts and Bibles are just such a great gift and we've got a lot of other things and and we've got our new series on understanding and loving your child maybe ADHD or smoking pot anyway um, she's back yay we're going to a break (laughs) when when we come back we'll get her back on the phone but 1-800-NEW-LIFE if you need a resource for anybody how We Love by Mylon and Kay. What a mm-hmm. great book. Then you've got Jill's Forgiving Our Fathers and Mothers. And after the holidays, you may need to do <laughs> yes. that. And so maybe it's a gift to yourself. That's right. Okay. All right. But it's 1-800-NEW-LIFE to help us. Or if you want um, 
us to help you. You call us. We've got workshops, counselors, so many resources. Okay, we'll take this break and come back, and uh, Larry Sonnenberg will come visit us right after Joyce. My husband's been addicted to porn since he was 10 years old. I found out about nine months into my marriage that he has a porn addiction. My name is Shelly Martinkus, and I want to personally invite you to the Restore Workshop. If you have been affected by betrayal, it might be that your husband has been looking at pornography. It might be an emotional, a physical affair. I would love for you to come join us. Restore has empowered me and has given me the tools to work through my anger, work through my pain, work through my confusion, and help me realize that I am worthy. Being here and being surrounded by people who get it has given me my power back. Please don't hesitate. Pick up the phone, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. I would love to see you there. The Restore Workshop is coming to Washington, D.C., November 12th through the 14th. To register or to find out more, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE or go online to newlife.com. Thank you, Restore. You have changed my life forever. I was really living a very anxiety-filled life. I did go to take your life back. That's why I continue to support the ministry with the hope that not only am I helping my own situation, that I'm helping others as well. You can help New Life Live stay on the air by joining Club New Life today. When you sign up to support us monthly through Club New Life, we'll send you the New Life member thank you gift of the New Life Journal, 100 Days of Peace, 7 Ways to Choose Healing, Growth Has No Boundaries, a Restoration Bible, and a New Life Grocery Tote to hold it all. Plus, there are ongoing benefits, like access to the Club New Life video library, the monthly Club New Life CD or download, quarterly resources, free shipping on purchased resources, and discounts on workshops. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. Support Club New Life, and together we can help hurting people find help and hope in life's hardest places. Call 1-800-639-5433 to join Club New Life today. glad you joined us for New Life Live. To be a part of the program, call 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We're back. Steve Arderman here. We're back with Joyce. Joyce, hi. Yay. How are you? <laughs> Joyce, hi, are you there? I'm sorry. Okay. I don't know what happened. I'm sorry. It wasn't, we don't think it was um, you, Joyce. No. Okay. So keep going there and let us know uh, how we can help. Okay. So, um, he was hired in April, and then uh, one month ago, uh, he was let go. There was no reason given. He never received any type of notification that there was an issue. It just, he was let go. Um, I need to know, I, I'm struggling with him every day. Uh, mm-hmm. I am concerned about his mental health. Um, he is on medication, uh, which he, he, they started him on four years ago. Um, but, uh, it's just, um, every time he gets a rejection, it's, and it's hard on me too, because I, I, I'm, I pray and I beg the Lord constantly hmm. now. that he would not get so depressed that he would hurt himself. Okay, so what are we doing about that depression, first of all, so that he doesn't hurt himself? He's he's on medication. Um, he still sees or talks uh, Zoom to his therapist mm-hmm. that he's had. She's been very kind that she's actually seeing him on a sliding scale basis because he lost all his benefits. Um, uh, he doesn't exercise, tried for many years. He just, he won't exercise. Um, Joyce? We do have a, yes, I'm sorry. Is, is his dad in the picture? Yes. Okay. And, and is, are there any other siblings? Dad. Okay. Are there other siblings? Yes, there's an older son. And what is their relationship? It's, it's a difficult one. Um, just difficult. 
they they're trying now. Mm. So I, um, I have a. I think it's it's a challenge when you have a child that you it's it's unexpected that they would have these challenges. Um, you want the best for him. It's pretty amazing that he graduated from college, and that's really um, amazing that he went through that whole process. I mean, that says that he's got a skill level. Now, I imagine that he was let go because he doesn't relate well to other people um, because that's part of autism. That's just, you know, yeah. that's how that works. And high functioning is just that awkward, I don't mm -hmm. know how to connect with other people. And I would say that whatever therapy he's in, it should be focused on how to create those connections. But one thing I know about this population is that they are in defense mode. Mm -hmm. The world is coming at them, and they're having to discern all everything, the colors, the sounds, the people. Um, there is a, a sense of, you know, every person that's coming towards me is a stranger, you know. And, and you're connected to him, and he's connected to your husband, right? So there is the potential that he can make that connection, but it's, it is um, an ongoing journey, to say the least. Well, and Joyce, yeah. it seems like you are very afraid that he is very fragile. And I'm yeah. want. Go ahead. Do you, do you no, feel I'm that? I'm agreeing with you. Oh, okay. You do feel like he's very fragile, right? And yet, look, Becky just pointed out all that he has, you know, tackled in his life. Um, yeah, because there's a lot of people right? that don't have autism that can't graduate college. I know, I, mean, I just, know. So it's a pretty big deal. So he has a lot of strengths too. Um, so, I, I, and I'm wondering, I guess, what the reality is in that. Um, and autism is not a death sentence. Mm -mm. It's just okay, like Becky pointed out. It's difficulty connecting, but he does really well in other areas. So let's help him develop this area that he struggles in. There, Joyce, yeah, go ahead, There Joe. are um, actually like social skill building groups for young adults that puts them in a community where you learn how to connect and they have assignments and things that help to boost that for people and help them to read better the social cues that don't come automatically for them. And that might be something to add. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, I sorry to interrupt, but I have been looking for something like that in our area. Okay. Good. And I've called many, many, many therapists and people that offer group settings, and I cannot locate anything. Okay. What? what well, let me ask you one more question, Joyce. Sorry, Steve. I know you want to talk. I, I want to know what your son's focus is. When, because I hear, Joyce, that you're doing all of this, and I just want to know what your son wants. Wants in what respect? I'm sorry. What does that mean? With work, mean with, with, work with support, with oh. his life. Oh. Uh, he's very lonely, very lonely, and would love to have a relationship with a young a young woman. He's never are you dated. In, are you involved with the church, or how did he get through school without making connections that way? See, there's we are. there's so many so we many are levels involved with the church, but he left the church uh, last year. Okay, so I do want to jump in. Yes, my uh, daughter had a problem with abstract thinking and we had her tested and was she was told early on you're always going to have a problem with math she didn't have the scores to get into college so the the president called and said what what would your daughter say if uh, she was admitted to college but she was on academic probation i said oh she would think that was typical because she has a problem with math and she always will but she's very high in executive thinking skills off the charts and and all of that and so she'll be just funny so that's exactly what I wanted to hear so when I told her you're you, you're going to get in but you're going to be on academic probation she says oh okay it, it just would be expected and so when he goes to a job and he gets let go it should just be well this is kind of what I expected, and here's a couple of things I learned from that, and maybe next time 
I'll try to avoid those kind of conversations, or I'll try to learn five questions that I could ask if we're standing around and it's time for a conversation with somebody. I'll know those five. In fact, I'll even keep them in my pocket to ask people. I don't have to talk. I can just ask good questions. What I'm saying is you want this to be uh, normal Mm -hmm. for him. You want him to not be crushed every time he gets let go from a job or told you know it's not working out right. it's part of it and then you're on his side it's normal there's no question you, you don't have to call up and find out why he got let go you just assume right. this is just it's very difficult but every job you have you're preparing for that ultimate job you're going to have one day that you're going to love and it's just going to work for you and, and it'll be a unique situation where the negatives that you have won't come into play and all the positives that you have will be utilized that's what i would be going for if i were you and in the same thought process you know you you say that he's lonely Mm -hmm. he probably doesn't have those relationship skills and so just like what you said you know sometimes you say okay when you see somebody you look at them eye to eye and say hello or Mm -hmm. how are you and you just begin to build those skills because that's going to serve him for a lifetime and I know that your concern about him is real, and it's I get it. I understand it. The, the challenge is how can we best set him up using his own strengths and abilities that he can create a life for himself that works for him, as opposed to what maybe traditional would mm-hmm. be. And you ha- it has, Joyce, you have to be really careful, and I'm hoping that you're just sharing it with us this way, but not to communicate to him that you think he's fragile, right? You want to give him the message that's that... That's a great, that's a great, that's a great thing that you just said. Yeah, I think... And I, I need to know how to work on that, mm-hmm. me. Right. That's a great thing. Right, and so you may want to go get some help yourself in learning how to deal with a son like this. See, you feel bad for him. This is his normal. And so we all have deficits. We just Mm -hmm. have to learn how to maximize our strengths, right? And minimize the the effects of the deficits. We all I'd be saying things like, my child made it through college. Right. And if you can do that, honey, that is, you're going to be just fine. And people lose jobs. Right. Yeah. A lot of young people. Yes. lose jobs mm-hmm. especially right. first jobs and second and third jobs so he may have lost this job because it just wasn't a good fit that's right yeah. so we find something that's the better fit right you and don't be just the go voice. back you know you don't get let go from jimmy johns and, and then go to work for pot belly sandwiches <laughs> you say maybe there was something in the sandwich and be the voice of hope Joyce. be the voice of hope we'll take a break come back with larry son my life I've been dealing with an opiate addiction. Why is opioid addiction quickly becoming one of our nation's biggest killers? Maybe it's because it isn't only those who are addicted who are in denial. We did what I see so many parents do, is it can't be an addiction. There's something medically wrong. It's impossible to solve a problem when you don't know what you're up against, and families will try to find any explanation except the one that will put them on the right path. Alcoholism and drug addiction is a family disease. It doesn't affect just the individual. If someone you love is abusing painkillers, know what you're up against. It's time to admit its addiction and seek treatment. Call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We have partner treatment centers around the country. Call 1-800-639-5433 or visit us online at newlife.com. We just made a decision. We will do whatever it takes. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. I'm an addict, and I'm trying to get God in my life again. You seem to be able to get to the crux of a problem quickly. Our Christ-centered treatment programs can help you break free to embrace all that God has for you and your family. I just want to thank you guys for bringing me to a relationship with Jesus. There really is help for marital problems, depression, addictions, panic attacks, and feelings of hopelessness. I came back with so many tools to help me prepare myself to fight this struggle and this battle that I have every day. You can start living again today. Living the life God intended for you. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. They did care and they did follow up very lovingly. 
and it made all the difference in my life. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Someone who cares is waiting at the other end of the phone. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Just call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 1-800-639-5433. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. We are back. Steve Arterburn here with Dr. Jill Hubbard, Becky Brown, Larry Sonnenberg's in the studio. Larry, what do you have for us today here? Steve, I've got a a lady sent in a fairly long testimony, so I'm going to try to take excerpts from it here for you. But I love this because it talks about different things about New Life. In August 2019, I suffered a total surprise breakup with a man that had come back into my life after many years. He pursued me long distance for four and a half years. We were finally in a relationship for 14 months, and he ended it abruptly. My heart was shattered as I had never felt so loved and didn't understand as it was so good. I joined a grief group and then had the courage from New Life to sign up for a workshop, Emotional Freedom. It took all I could do to get there. I walked away so proud of myself and realized grief was a process and it was the intensity of the love I felt. What really helped me was picking up the book written by Dr. Stoop, Forgiving What You Can Never Forget. It helped me turn my bitterness into forgiveness. I continued to listen to Dr. Stoop and and Stoop and he was, he always reminded me so much of my father and things he said. Before Dr. Stoop passed, I was listening to your program, and Dr. Stoop one afternoon said, how you feel about yourself is what life is all about. I I know it was another gift from God comforting me in my grief. I have tremendous gratitude for new life and amazing people that work there. Thank you, God. She Mm. listened to the radio program. Mm -hmm. She went to a workshop. She read Dave's book, and she listened to radio again. It just... Mm-hmm. Every little engagement, every little intersection makes a difference. And we encourage that for you folks. You know, call us at 800 New Life. And it took everything she had to get to a group, uh, workshop, but she did it. Mm-hmm. And you can do the same. And folks, for those of you that are lis- listening on the sidelines that probably aren't going to do all that, you could still make a gift. Or maybe you've been and you've experienced this and you want to say thank you and pay it forward. Here's your chance. We we love it that people care for other people and make their gifts to us to help those other people. Mm-hmm. And I want to thank you for that. Well, it really is making a difference. And if it wasn't, we would change what we do. And and we just love hearing these stories about radio. Mm-hmm. And I I have heard from people that the radio program changed the way they thought mm-hmm. about people and their problems and the way they thought about medication the way they thought about a lot of different things god a god of mercy versus the angry god they had in their head so Mm -hmm. thank you all of you who support us and allow us to do what we do it really makes a difference and i want to Mm -hmm. say thanks to all of our club new life family who uh in their monthly giving really is the backbone of everything that we do and many of them have joined because of out of gratitude for what they've experienced we're offering a a time with god welcome gift if you want to join club Mm -hmm. new life it includes 100 days of peace devotional a new life journal a restoration bible seven ways to choose healing growth has no boundaries and all in a new life grocery bag that you can take to the (laughs) store and show everybody that you are a supporter of new life it's a wonderful and, thing. And right. And for people who can't give a lot, it's that giving a little yeah. bit over time that adds up for us, right? Mm-hmm. And here's a challenge for current Club New Life people. Some of some of you folks have been giving for two, three, five, ten, fifteen years Club New Life. And you've been giving the same amount all that time. Would you if you're giving thirty dollars a month and you've been doing it since you know, two thousand and five, would you maybe Raise that up to thirty-three dollars or thirty-five dollars, and uh, just that little bit. You know, we everything goes up in life, but when we're on these automatic plans, they don't go up. That's true. <laughs> so anything you can do to just give us a little nudge, enough of you do that, it'll make a big difference. It really would. 
The number is 1-800-NEW-LIFE. And just call us. I mean, if you need something or you can help us in a little way, I, I don't care what it is. When you give anything, well, you become part of the solution. You become part of spreading the message and helping other people. And so please come be part of our team. It's a partnership with you, all of our supporters. And uh, when you become part of Club New Life, you know, we're about to do a, um, a Club New Life uh, weekend gathering. special yeah. gathering. And uh, that's what happens. You become part of, of the New Life family and you join us on the gathering and you hear material you wouldn't hear other places. If you join, we'll send you that invitation. And there we'll, you go. Yeah. What is going to happen that weekend, Larry? Yeah. Have you made that up yet? Or? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you and Jill are going to kind of yes. go th through down memory lane a little bit. Okay. Remember some things oh, that'll be from fun. the past. Mm -hmm. um, Steve, you're going to share a little bit about some partnership we're working on. Mm. And uh, our new chief operating officer this year, Dave Thornton, is going to share what's going on at the call center. There's a lot of good new stuff, new people. He's going to help with that. I'm going to share a little bit about... God's hand and mm -hmm. the evidence of that on our finances the last couple of years. Oh, it's pretty amazing. I think isn't I mean, when is the last time we ever went through summer and didn't go in the red? I mean, most <laughs> yeah. every ministry does, but we didn't this year. That's why I say God's so hand is so mm -hmm. evident. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, that's why you got to join the party here yeah. and be and a this, part of something yeah. bigger than yourself. And this partnership that's developing is just it's just right out of heaven. I mean, it, it just, mm -hmm. it's the only way you can explain it. And we'll talk more about that as we go along with this uh, new partnership that mm -hmm. we are developing. Anyway, Larry, thank you for all that you do. Mm -hmm. You have helped us so much to get to this uh, point. And um, anybody else working with me would have resigned a long, <laughs> long time ago. And, and I, There's I know something to be said for longevity, <laughs> Larry, yeah, right. right? And you've, you've told people that. You and, uh, kept, I, you've kept this ministry going. So many sing, yeah. right? You know? Yeah. Anyway, it's been, it's been wonderful uh, to see all that, that has happened with you. And then it really does feel like that we've been through so many tough Mm -hmm. times and persevered and grew and and this is a great time of great mm -hmm. blessing mm -hmm. steve i got another little testimony here that made me chuckle and i just want to thank everybody who's called this radio program because you give this you're giving entertainment value this okay. for this <laughs> this lady writes my husband and i'd like to lie in on saturday and listen to new life live on alexa we joke that listening to other people's problems makes us feel better about ours <laughs> 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 But well, that, that is so, so much. True? I mean, that's, that's funny, so much better than the way true. I thought it was going. <laughs> yeah, I did too. Say her husband's a liar. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, been lying for a long time. But no, that's good. It's really good. Well, I'll tell you, I uh, I was introduced at uh, I was speaking the other day, and on how to kill your calling from God. Mm -hmm. And the guy that introduced me said, uh, Steve, you don't know this, but 20 years ago, I was going through a divorce, and I'm just searching for anything i find new life and i hear the grace and the wisdom and i i made it through mm. that divorce mm. as a minister mm. his wife had been unfaithful and he heard that others that had happened to and had made it through and mm. he he was just as he introduced me uh thanked me for us being who we are I was able to record that. That'll be played at my funeral. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, it'll, be, it'll be a fantastic Well, thing. it's true, though, Steve. You've always led the way with your vulnerability, your honesty, shockingly, for so many people. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it is a great way to live life because really then you is. are free mm -hmm. and God can and God has used you in so many ways. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful for you. Oh, thank mm -hmm. you. And as I've Me overheard too. you saying, if I hadn't been open and honest about things, I'd be on the back ward of a state mental health. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> hey, if you need some help, 1-800-NEW-LIFE. If you can help us, same number. We love you. We care about you. Thank you for supporting us. Thanks for helping us help others. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That is the number to call. See you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. We hope this program has helped you by giving you insights for handling the challenges you face in your life. We want you to know that we're here for you, but you also need to know that New Life Live is a listener-supported ministry. To make your donation or to get any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 
That's 1-800-639-5433 or write to us at New Life Ministries, P.O. Box 1029, Lake Forest, California, 92609. Please join us again tomorrow for New Life Live. Hi, thank you for watching New Life Live. You know, New Life Live is a Christian counseling program where we deal with the hard questions about life, relationships, kids, free choice, freedom of will, whatever. It's all right there on New Life Live every day, every weekday, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. If you want to call into the live broadcast, you can find the schedule on newlife.com or click the social media link right below. You can see every episode of New Life Live on the New Life YouTube channel. Watch it with a friend. Watch it later. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you'll never miss another episode. So if you want to listen on the go, download the app. The link is right below. And I hope if you need some information, if you want to get some help, you'll call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. And I'll see you next time.